complex, the Bible is complex. Human existence is a tangled ball of experience, perception, and understanding. Ravel is a puzzling word, denoting both a tangling and untangling. This podcast attempts to hold honest conversations in good faith. Some ideas expressed in this podcast will be challenging. Others will be obvious. When a PhD in biblical interpretation and a habitually podcasting man-child discuss matters of society, scripture, and scandal, you get Ravel. Hey everybody, you are listening to Ravel and it's me, your best buddy, Basil. Just thought I'd put a little bit of extra stank on that one. And with me, as always, I've got the cybernetic, the algorithmic, the proto-anti-neo-Luddite Dr. Christopher Ryan Gates. How are you, robot man? I am fine. Beep, boop, boop, beep. <laughs> wow, I don't... What was that last word? We're having fun, folks. Uh, it was a word I made up. Uh, proto anti neo luddite. Okay. Um, right. And which is what you are. Okay. So get used to it. Fantastic. Today we have a very fun episode, folks, that sort of combines um, so many of my interests, uh, including Jesus and technology and Dr. Christopher Ryan Gates's ability to create a safe space for the guests of this show. Mm. Um, today we are talking to Stuart McPherson. McPherson. He is a VR campus pastor. You heard that right. Virtual reality campus pastor at Lakeland Dot Church. Lakeland Church. Their website is Lakeland Dot Church at uh, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And um, wow, what an exciting look into the future we had. Dr. Chris? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Um, I, you know, I was talking with a couple people in preparation for the show and I let them know I was going to be talking to a virtual, you know, church pastor. And uh, many of them kind of looked at me, you know, quizzically and wondering, what are you even talking about? And I said, I don't mm-hmm. know exactly what I'm talking about just yet. Uh, and came into it with a large amount of skepticism. Um, and if I'm being perfectly honest, there may still be some, but in talking, uh, with our guest, I, I realized that, man, I feel like his heart is in the right place and, uh, he has, you know, an ambition to spread the gospel through whatever means possible. And you'll hear us talk about the various means and how those have changed throughout the history of humanity. But, uh, it was really hard for me to, you know, be critical of the ministry that he and his church are doing. So you you might hear me kind of be won over by him throughout the course of the conversation, but just a really, really interesting approach that they're taking to church and to the gospel. And I might be jumping into it a little too quickly. Do you have a better uh, introduction? Yeah, I'm, well, no, I mean, that's all very good. Remember, we still have to record an outro, which we can review a lot of these things. Yes. Because I'm sitting here and I want to talk about so many things, but I'm going to save it for after the conversation. But I do want to um, prepare everybody because, you know, if you know me and my work, I obviously have sort of a bias when it comes to... Uh, I don't know, a sort of enthusiasm about critiquing uh, the future technocratic utopia that we are being promised. And I have a few opportunities to really lay it all out. Mm. And whether or not that is um, adequately responded to, I would love to hear the listeners' uh, reactions to that not that that's the whole point but what you i mean you brought it up which is stewart is a pure-hearted wonderful pastor absolutely and 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 i think that's really what shines through is that it's not a 
I didn't, I see, I got to save some stuff for the end, man. I can't give it all away. <laughs> so uh, if you don't know what the metaverse is or what a virtual reality campus or a church is, you'll, you'll learn all about that. Um, we do, a, a, I think, a great job of sort of um, digging in to what that looks like. And I want to encourage everybody to prepare yourself for the future because you will be there whether you like it or not. Um, yep. And with that, I say we just jump right into it and we will visit, um, revisit rather, so many things we want to talk about on the other side of this conversation. That sounds like a fantastic plan to me. Okay, beep, boop, boop. Everybody log on, uh, put in your AOL passwords, <laughs> and let's hack into the cyber zone. <laughs> us today we've got Stuart McPherson he's the VR campus pastor the virtual reality campus pastor at uh, Lakeland Church in Lake Geneva Wisconsin and this is gonna be fun Stuart how are you doing buddy mm -hmm. I'm doing really well I'm excited for this absolutely thanks for making time um, so I'm just gonna jump right into it because we I have uh, a long standing passion for uh, just the technology and what it means for people and our spiritual interactions and our spiritual experiences and practices and devotions and things like that. And over the past few years, we've been seeing the metaverse uh, go from just some crazy thing that podcasters would talk about uh, you know, describing some sort of potential dystopian future um, to mm -hmm. something that is talked about on a regular basis and considered sort <laughs> of the future of digital interactions. And as all good churches do, uh, there are churches all over the world sort of seeing an opportunity. And I want to know what 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 how what what's going on Stuart? Stuart, how did uh how did you get into this this role of yours virtual reality campus pastor was virtual reality something that you have always been interested in or is this like was there a staff meeting where they're like okay there's this new metaverse thing uh, who wants to do it ah oh, the young vibrant energetic man <laughs> Oh man, I love it. Yeah, so uh the funny part is I had never had any intention uh in doing digital ministry whatsoever. Uh, I remember back just before March 2020, you know, with the pandemic and everything, there was an article that dropped in I think it was either Outreach magazine or Christianity Today, one of those. And it was an article um, by DJ Soto talking about this idea of church and virtual reality. And uh, at the time, I was working at a, a different church. And a few of us as a staff, we got together and we were starting to discuss the legitimacy of church and virtual reality. And by the time that it was all said and done, we all sat there and said, this this can never be a thing. Church and virtual reality can never be something that should be accepted as legitimate church. Um, all of us agreed upon that, including myself. In fact, pre-pandemic, I was even one of those people that uh, I had a hard time with the idea that uh, digital church, uh, whether that was just you, you would say that you attend a church, but it's only online. I had an issue with that one. Um, and then all of a sudden, March 2020 yeah. comes across and um, we're, all the churches are forced to make a pivot and go digital in every expression. Um, I was a young adult pastor at the time. And next thing I know, I'm creating a YouTube channel uh, in order to continue to get messages across and keep our young adults uh, in community with each other while we're all on uh, lockdown that was supposed to be two weeks long. Um, and all of a sudden, I found this legitimacy for digital ministry. Uh, yeah. But while all I, that was going on, yeah, go ahead. 
I'm, I'm so curious. So you guys actually, you know, you actually had the meeting and all agreed that this was a bad idea before it was like the only option. What were some of the, because uh, of course there are going to be people listening who mm -hmm. are, are still in that space. I mean, there's, it's still kind of a, a, a conversation going on in the, in the church as a whole. Um, what were, I mean, I'd love to know some of the thinking and the reasons that you guys agreed that this, this is not what needed to be done. Yeah. Uh, so the big one was the idea of not forsaking the gathering. Uh, so this mm -hmm. idea in Hebrews, like, uh, we're supposed to be a people, this ecclesia that comes together and we fellowship with one another, we break bread with one another. And so uh, for that alone, we kind of just put our foot down and said, man, this can't be a thing. But in this article, they started talking about how they were doing communion in virtual reality and how they were doing baptism in virtual reality. And to us, it's just like, man, these these can't be, these are expressions of the church um, that can't be done outside of the four walls of a physical building. That was our opinion then at that time. Or and so because just, of that, that was... A, or even just physically. Yeah. I mean, you think of communion, you think of baptism. These are sort of bodily expressions of bodily, uh, uh, I guess you could call them rituals or sacraments or, or whatever word you want to use, theological sounding Ordinances. word. Ordinances. Uh, what's mm -hmm. that, Chris? Ordinances. Ordinances. Yes. Right. Well, Chris knows the word, so that's that's uh, we always use Chris. <laughs> this is why I'm here. Yes, the yes. Ordinances. Um, and so the idea of not partaking physically in those types of things. I mean, that seems like the easiest uh, argument to, <laughs> to, to address uh, the, the, the lack of viability for the VR metaverse church experience. Um, honestly, I had not even thought about the intensity of that argument until you just said it just now. So mm. excuse my reaction. Yeah, no, I'm, but I think that's even still today, that's a conversation that's going on with many of the churches that are hopping into virtual reality is just that like, man, how, how far can we take this? And are these hills that we're willing to die on? And some of those are conversations that um, other virtual reality campus pastors that I'm speaking with, it's still happening within their own congregation. So that's at that time, back in 2020, that was the conversation that we were having. And because of that, as a very traditional church, we were saying this can never be a thing. And because of even those elements alone for virtual reality were the same reasons why we're saying digital church can never be a thing because you're missing out on this idea of doing communion as the body. Like how would you do baptism? Which is really funny when you think about it now, because um, or as I guess as I think about it now, because as uh, my time with that church, I spent time as a middle school pastor there before I transitioned to the young adult pastor. And there was a girl who um, she couldn't come to the physical building because of uh, an illness and she wanted to get baptized. So the high school pastor and I, we hopped in our car and we went over to their house and we did a baptism for uh, for this girl. And it's just like, so why is it that we're willing to make a pivot on something like that, but we're not willing to make a pivot saying, oh, yeah, you can do this digitally? I mean, yes, there's still the fact that we were there physically in order to, the, to perform the baptism. But it was just like so weird that during the time I was me, I was willing to put my foot down and say, nope, this can't be a thing. Right. And that's as far as I was willing to take. It's like, all right, we had a discussion about it. We'll call it good. Um, one of our one of our other uh co-workers at the church he was saying well there's this church out on the east coast and they have a whole department dedicated to their online family and i was like great i'm happy for them i'm glad that they feel like that that can be an expression i don't think that it is a legitimate one so yeah um i'm wondering as you're as you're talking about uh these other uh VR pastors, um, and you're talking about like a whole community. Um, honestly, I had heard, you know, whispers of it here and there. And then when Basil was talking about getting in touch with you, um, you know, I only know of a couple guys or churches that are doing it. How many other VR pastors are you connected with that are out there? Or how large do you think the uh, movement or community or whatever you want to call it is right now? How many more are out there? 
Yeah, so um, on Alt Space, which is the primary um, platform that we're on, I think the latest that I saw was 20 active churches holding a service in, in Alt Space. Okay, and that's representing about how many congregants do you think, either on average or collectively? Ooh. If you had like, to guess. I mean, or like you're talking own, about people who are example. actually attending those churches? People who are attending, yeah. Uh, man, that's that's a really hard question to answer just because the analytics on it, um, they, like Alt Space tells us every single week, um, like we'll take this past weekend, Mother's Day weekend, which turns out to be a horrible weekend for virtual reality church. Um, <laughs> Not a lot of moms <laughs> settling for the VR church. Plugging into the VR. <laughs> we're going to church. I go to church every weekend. No, we're going to physical church. Okay, mom. Um, yeah, I mean, typically... The analytics for Allspace tells us that we have anywhere between 80 to 100. At a high end, we've had 200 people hop in on one of our services. Um, this past weekend, we had 55. Um, but I mean, that's still pretty significant. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, you're that's talking a, that's about a congregation. People, but, I mean, you're talking about people that may have been in for mm, two minutes. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. that's why, like, it's a really hard question to answer. So we've actually made the pivot, um, and this might be a further, a longer discussion, but we've actually made the pivot to determine that our virtual reality congregation is actually who is involved in our Discord channel. Okay. That's like the, mm -hmm. like, uh, just chatting during the service or just in total sort of connected to the ministry? total connected to the ministry mm -hmm. now for those who might not have like a really good and i'm sorry we got kind of off track of the whole story here but we can get back to it in a second for those who mm -hmm. don't fully understand or maybe have never interacted or haven't done enough reading or whatever about vr and the metaverse um which are not necessarily synonymous but i think for our purposes they're close enough um sure you're, I mean, you're welcome to push back on that if you'd like. Um, w like, what is this? Is this a live? Or do you focus on sort of a a live experience, a live event? Are there recordings? What What does a service look like? Yeah, uh, love the question. So we're actually on what we would call version three of our uh, campus in virtual reality. So our original launch was back in March 2021, um, and we were doing kind of like a, I guess you would call it like a traditional small group. Like we were taking, if you're familiar with um, oh, Clubhouse, it was uh -huh. like a social media platform that came out. Um, we we kind of ran with that idea of like, man, what if we bring the idea of Clubhouse into virtual reality? So we'll bring up a topic. Um, we'll spend 10, 15 minutes focusing in on this topic, and then we'll open it for Q&A afterwards. And everybody will just invite people up to the platform, give us their two cents, and go from there. So that's what we started as. Um, and then we switched to uh, replaying our services from the weekend. So we would just pull videos from YouTube, put it in uh, you know, a slides document, and then play it within the event. Um, and so you're now, like playing Harvard, a video in, in that instance, you're playing a video on a big screen for lack of a better word, uh, yep. in, in a virtual reality environment. So you're like watching a video as if you're watching YouTube, but you're also in a virtual space, presumably with other people's avatars sitting around, thing like that. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so we were doing that and then uh in november of uh 2021 we made the pivot of doing live stream services into our virtual reality events so still the same idea people are coming in in their avatar form and sitting in a room floating in a room because we don't have legs um <laughs> just staring at the screen of a service that in real life people are sitting in our building uh participating in taking in um, so that was kind of like version like 2.5 when we shifted to in real time live streaming. Um, and then for this past Easter, we launched our virtual reality uh, world. So we built a Lakeland world uh, that people can enter into 24-7. Um, 
and interact with us and at least get to know who Lakeland is just by being in our world. And so from there, we still live stream our services on Sundays. And okay, so so mainly a lot of the, the church, the churchy part is a, a live stream of your actual uh, service. Correct. And yet yeah. now you kind of have fully moved into the, the metaverse model, which is it is a space that people can log on to whenever. And what what is your uh, what is your world like? Is it just like a copy of your campus or, or did you go full Minecraft and, you know, <laughs> make some sort of beautiful uh, landscape? But if people log in, what, what are they experiencing? Yeah. So we gave a world builder, somebody who is familiar with Unity, which is the program uh, that a lot of people use in order to build and develop games and all that kind of stuff. So we hired this guy who he took blueprints of our in real life building. And we said, these are the components of our in real life building that we want in virtual reality. So the nice part is if anybody who ever visits Lakeland in real life or the mentality that I had was, if anybody ever visited Lakeland in real life who came from virtual reality, they would be walking into a building that they were already familiar with. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, mm. So we built that as our primary space for meeting and running our service. But there's a lot more that we developed with it. So um, we love to do church in the park and worship nights at one of our local parks around here. So um, our world builder built this outdoor amphitheater. Um with a waterfall and we place a screen out there so we can do worship nights and all that kind of stuff when we run those events in that arena um we also built a city he, he managed to compress this massive city small enough to fit into the world um and save the memory space in order for us to be on the alt space and event board but we're using that as like what we call what i'm calling groups land so when we run small groups in virtual reality um, all of our group leaders host their group over in groups land. Um, and in that area, there's like a gym, there's a coffee shop, there's a bar, there's a movie theater. And so basically the idea was let's keep the sanctuary spot as primary use for Sunday service. And let's take advantage of the rest of this throughout the week um, and let people come in and explore and just let them kind of see what it is that we have to offer. So when you come in, like, it looks nothing like Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, because we don't have massive skyscrapers and we don't have waterfalls. Um, but there's components to it that is very familiar to who we are. And then there's some stuff that we took the liberty of the fact that it's virtual reality and said, let's have some fun with this. Yeah, I mean, it really does sound like you're having some fun with it. That is, uh, that is as far as the scope of what you're doing, it sounds like you're really taking advantage of the possibilities. Um, with your small groups, are you live streaming on a screen again, or do you have your small group leaders in VR in their avatar type of thing, teaching or, or facilitating conversation is, I'm just trying to understand like, what is, what is it like, man, to be in a metaverse small group? Mm, yeah. So we're actually just now in the process of launching our small groups. So we've got one guy that, um, so we're really wanting to focus in on relationship more than anything else because um, we believe that relationship is what builds the bridge for us to have uh, the deeper theological questions like, hey, we want to introduce you to Jesus. I mean, people come in and they know right from the get-go, like, this is a church. We have it, like, plastered all over the place. Like, you come right. in and right on our building it says Lakeland.Church. Like, people yeah. know that's what they're getting. Um, so we got a guy that he's going to be leading a small group that is just it's a Bible trivia game show, kind of like um, there was one out there mm. that for a while that was going on. And so it's just like, hey, let's introduce people to some concepts of the Bible. Uh, let's make it fun with a point system and all that kind of stuff. And we'll just the idea is that we'll do this once a week at the same di uh, same day, same time. Um, that way we have the opportunity to build community. I'm going to be launching with uh, one of our uh, launch team members next week, um, Alpha in virtual reality and mm. i've taken um alpha's material and i have i've broken it down in a way where instead of it being like a 20 plus minute long video clip um i've broken it down in a way where it's like a three to five minute video clip and then discussion with the idea and the intention behind that of people pop in and out at such random times that 
I wanted it to be, um, no matter when you come in, you can hop in on the conversation without feeling like you're behind or you missed out on something. Um, and that's actually something that I learned from one of the other churches that's in VR. I, they're hosting Alpha right now, and I hopped in. I was like, cool, this is this is going to be beneficial in the long run because there's a lot of people that are just asking questions, and they find virtual reality a, a great and safe place to ask the questions that they've always had about church and Christianity, but they were always uncomfortable asking it in person. Right, right. I have to say that um, I'm extremely uh, interested in the Bible trivia. Uh, <laughs> I love Bible trivia. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds like something I would really uh, have fun with. Uh, perhaps I'll log in at some point. I don't have a VR uh, apparatus, but uh, maybe at some point I can get in there. Um, but then Alpha also is an incredible ministry that um, a lot of churches use. And I'm just feeling compelled in the midst of all of this that I'm, we kind of just jumped into it uh, right. <laughs> in a certain sense, like it was totally normal. And there might be a lot of people that are out there kind of scoffing at the idea. Um, and I, th I just think it's really interesting that we're not, this is not too far from what we've seen happen over the past decade or more with these different satellite churches, hmm. as a lot of churches have, um, mm -hmm. where you will have a big main campus, um, and then you have basically like a pastor's message that gets live streamed to a bunch of different buildings right. where people are coming together and they're sitting there to watch a sermon or a message from a guy who's not actually standing in front of them. Um, and really, this is kind of just one step further um, in that in that progression. And I, I have to, if I'm if I'm being completely honest and, and letting you know, um, you know, you were talking about the forsaking of the assembly, and I suppose there are lots of different ways to understand what the uh, you know assembly looks like. But mm -hmm. I can speak from w when I was uh, in my in my doctorate program, they s began to offer about halfway through. Um, video conferencing to where you could you could video into the seminars and you could video into the classes and things like that and I did find that there was um, I, I I live in Central Florida and I was attending school in New Orleans and I actually would commute back and forth uh, either once or twice a month to New Orleans to be there um, huh. on campus to sit in in the class because there was so much more I felt like that you just kind of uh, received as you were sitting there in person. There were extra conversations that were going on. There was the uh, sensation of actually being in the room with people and shaking hands and the extra conversations that you had during breaks and things like that. And uh, it's the same sort of thing even like with Bibles, you know, and everybody has the Bible app on their phone, but I'm a big proponent of having an actual physical paper copy of uh, your Bible. And I it just, I'm just putting it out there. My opinion of all of these things is I love things that are organic. I love things that feel natural and are tangible and all of those different sorts of things. But I can also see that there is some kind of advantage to uh, what you guys are doing in the virtual space because. As you were saying, even with the Alpha program, there's a lot of people who probably feel a little more comfortable um, engaging in these sorts of things. Um, and I guess you were talking about, you know, the caution that your church had in even doing this to begin with. But I wonder, do you think that it, where's the balance between being, you know, welcoming and inviting to these people who might just be content with, you know, during COVID, everybody started attending church from their living room, you know, all these churches started live streaming their service and everybody just sat on their couch and attended quote unquote church, you know, from their living room. And then people kind of became used to that. But I think there were a lot of people who were seeing some particular dangers there. Uh, but then on the other hand, there are a lot of people who might never actually show up to a church and, all these churches, I know all the pastors I was talking to personally, you know, who have congregations of two, three hundred, were saying that on their live streams they were getting thousands of hits, mm -hmm. you know, um, of all these people watching it. So I'm wondering, after all of that long rambling about stuff, <laughs> there is a certain benefit to all of us meeting in person Banding physically. Access. I think there's a it's, it's opened yeah, up yeah. the doors in an interesting way. Yeah. yeah. So what are the what do you think are are the pros and cons of it? Obviously you've talked about some of the pros, but like do you see any kind of, you know, uh cons here, any kind of detriment to to the body or anything like that? Yeah. So, um I'll I'll do my best to swing this answer back around to that primary question, the cons to it. Um but what I would love to address first is um the church that I was originally a part of 
we were the ones that had that conversation that we were like, man, I, this can't be a thing. The church that I'm part of now at Lakeland, um, I came in to uh, the position to be a small group pastor. And the moment that I walked in through the doors of this place, my senior pastor and executive pastor were talking about virtual reality church. And at that time, like I had already made that pivot in my mind, like, okay, I see the value in digital ministry and digital church because we were smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. But I was still against virtual reality. My, my senior pastor and executive pastor were uh, deep into investigating and having conversations with people about, man, what would it look like for Lakeland to get into virtual reality? When do we pull the trigger on this? And it was uh, a year later after I first began interviewing with Lakeland when my senior pastor came up to me and our next gen director and said, hey, we're going to launch uh, virtual reality church an expression of it. Uh, and we're going to do it for a six month trial and you guys are going to be the ones that do it. Um, and I'm sitting there with like this, like this look on my face, like, cool. This is exciting. (laughs) Can't wait. And you know, something that people need to know about me is like, I'm not a video gamer whatsoever. I think like the last console that I had was an Xbox 360 that I primarily got so I could play Blu-ray, uh, videos. (laughs) <laughs> so oh, no. like so you're you're telling me that I'm it's a good to investment be, oh man it, at the time it was great not a great if yeah yeah, to yeah, do yeah. The dave ramsey get out of credit card debt <laughs> but you know whatever um but yeah so you know i'm not a gamer at all and alt space um and its look is very very video gamey um i was like dude i'm not gonna do well in this environment at all um the beauty and the genius of my senior pastor and executive pastor uh, was our next gen guy. He loves video games. He already had a headset. So he was well immersed in this uh, area. Um, But the community as a small group guy, the community aspect, that's what I was bringing into that environment. And man, it was just such a great combo from the get go. So as I work my way back to the cons to this, um, One of the pros that I'll say before I get to the cons was we had a guy in our uh, physical church or in real life uh, campus, um, and he asked me one day, and he's, man, I I always hate putting ages on people because I feel like I'm going to be so off and I'm going to offend them or I'm going to make them really happy. Um, (laughs) But, you know, let's let's say uh, 70s maybe around that and has a huge evangelistic heart. And so he asked me in a meeting one day, he's like, hey, Stuart, what do you love most about doing church and virtual reality? And um, I just told him, I was like, you know, the amazing thing is, and what I love about it is I became an international missionary without ever having to leave my basement. Because we had people from all around the world that were hopping into our events in alt space that I was then being privileged the opportunity to have faith-based conversations and introduce them to Jesus. And we've had people who have hopped in that are in areas around the world that is not accepting to the name of Jesus and not uh, welcoming of the Bible being in their borders. And we're like, cool, you're asking some really great questions. And my only hope and prayer is that one, either I see you again in this environment to further the conversation, or second, that you're going to take this into your family uh, environment or into your workplace, and all of a sudden we're, we're finding ourselves spreading seeds of hope all over the place, all because of a headset. Um, mm-hmm. So there's some of the pros. Some of the cons, I would say, you know, is um, it, it is very hit and miss on whether or not you're going to see some of the same people again. Mm. The wins are when you do see, you know, familiar faces, um, which is hard because familiar avatars and they write. Yeah. And they <laughs> change their avatar text. and you're like, that's, that's the win. You're like, <laughs> Oh man, I can just click on you and you're not having to carry this big name tag or I don't have to go. I'm, I'm the worst with names. So I'm always that person. It's like, Hey buddy. Hey guy, you know, Hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Now uh, you have a, yeah. uh, baseball boy rad boy 78 yeah. <laughs> dude i've got my cheat code I, I i got my backpack a in order to do some mortal combat moves on people with names i'm like oh there it is um so you know like it gives me the opportunity to remember faces remember names but yeah one of those cons for sure is like man we had a great conversation with this person last week and they haven't 
shown back up. And, you know, our next step for anybody who joins one of our services is to join our Discord channel that I was talking about earlier, just our community that we have. It's like our central uh, Grand Central Station for our VR campus. Like anybody who walks in through the doors, spawns in through the doors of Lakeland VR campus, um, your next step is to get into this community to keep the conversation going and, and to find fellowship, ask questions, all that kind of stuff. So we constantly push people that way. Like, man, we're so glad that you're here for a Sunday service. I hope you get something out of this message, but where you're really going to take a deep dive into your spiritual journey is by joining us on discord. Um, and so sometimes we get people over there and then sometimes we have some really great conversations like I had with a guy a couple of weeks ago um, who he's one of those is like, I'm not comfortable walking into a physical building. I have my doubts. I've always been afraid to ask people questions because I don't want to offend them. Um, but I feel like I can ask you here in this space. And at the end of it, man, I left that environment so jazzed up. I was like, okay, come on, God, you got to do something with this one. I hope this guy comes back the next week. So the cons are, man, sometimes you just don't see people again. So you have like this one opportunity to plant a seed and hope that exactly what scripture says, God's going to do his thing and cause things to grow and continue to flourish. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like. Tell me a little bit uh, about. Real quick. I, uh, just a real quick question. So it sounds like it's not necessarily all your your already established congregants. It sounds like a real uh, draw for brand new people. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it was because of that when we launched our world uh, just this past April for Easter, we went in with the intention of, okay, let's double down. Let's get um, as many people as we can from our, uh, you know, a certain number of our in real life um, Lakeland attenders that can carry the Lakeland DNA into this environment. Um, that way we have a better chance of discipling people. Um but the primary audience that we have are not Lakeland attenders. They're coming from all over the world, and a lot of them tend to be non-believers or hurt believers. Hello? Oh. Hello? Oh, there we go. I think we had a little tech issue there. Um, okay. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it, I guess in a way it really does sort of have that, uh, evangelistic or missions oriented flavor to it rather than just an alternative to showing up to church on Sunday. For us. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm wondering because I think a lot of people might be thinking, and honestly, I kind of have had the thought in the past when I heard about a VR church uh, that it's so kind of on the fringe of everything, like as far as a way of doing church, that I think uh, it makes me wonder about where your theology is. <laughs> like if your approach to church is on the fringe, then perhaps your theology is on the fringe too. So I'm wondering if you would just talk a little bit. I'm sure that what you're doing in the virtual space is reflecting what you guys are doing at your actual physical church location, which you've said um, here a couple times, actually, that they're similar even in, in appearance and things like that. So I'm assuming the theology of the doctrine is the same. So tell me a little bit about your home church, the church that is actually putting this on, like denomination or doctrine or those sorts of things, um, just so that we know the message uh, that you're spreading out there in the, in the virtual world. Yeah, so... Um... We are a non-denominational church, and um, really one of our core values is that we'll do anything short of sin in order to reach the lost. Um, and so that's where this came into play of us doing virtual reality. Um, and really the heartbeat of who we are at Lakeland is, I mean, plastered um, everywhere is our mission statement where we just tell people, like, we exist to lead people to follow Jesus, be changed by Jesus, and commit to the mission of Jesus. And all that is well and good. We love that. But it's the add-on to our mission here uh, in the next part that this is really what drives us as a church. We do all this because lives are at stake. And we know that. Mm -hmm. We know people who like lives are at stake within the virtual reality world, within the real world. So we're chasing after uh, any platform that we can in order to do that, help people follow Jesus, be changed by Jesus and commit to that mission of Jesus. 
Yeah. I, and I think that that's really cool because I have had this kind of conversation with people before where if you were to go, you know, people have, I think at every advent of a new technology, someone somewhere along the way has kind of scoffed at it. Um, and I had always thought, you know, I was like, if Paul, you know, the apostle, the one of the greatest evangelists the world has ever known, if not the greatest evangelist, uh, knew of a television, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. he would be like, wait a second, you're telling me you can point this little camera thing at me and then it will put this feed and my face and this message will go out to millions of people. I can talk to millions of people by talking to this one camera that he certainly that Paul would take advantage of television technology that he would take advantage of radio technology that he would take advantage of the internet and now even coming into you know this era of vr um you know i don't know how paul would feel about vr but i feel like he (laughs) might with with his heart in the right place reaching people with the gospel and saying wow there's people that are going to be on the other end of this vr headset thing here i can go in there and they can see a version of me and i can you know give them the truth i think that i think that he would do that um and it's just very interesting i think that as uh, you know, technology continues to progress. People are always resistant of it. But I mean, I think so long as you are actually communicating the gospel message to people, it doesn't matter in what form you're doing it. Now, I would hope as, you know, a pastor myself that all of this would lead to you would start encouraging people to get plugged in and connected with people in a real physical, tangible sort of space and things like that. Um, and I don't know if that's part of your mission. I know you're talking about getting connected on Discord and, uh, you know, even for the people who might be, you know, scoffing at that idea. It's like there are Facebook communities of people, you know, who are being ministered to and all of these things. You're not too far from a lot that's already happening. So um, are you encouraging people to kind of like uh, as it continues to grow and expand to start getting connected with people in kind of a real life space? You know, we haven't really taken that deep dive to encourage that um, just because for a lot of the people that we are coming across, this is their community. Um, this is how, I mean, I it's weird. I, I just recently get this. The VR campus pastor just recently watched Ready Player One for the very first time last week. <laughs> wow. Okay. A little now late to the game there. It. I know. Uh, it really tells you everything that you need to know about my my opinion of vr you know two years ago but um you know like i know of churches that are doing virtual reality and they do like these family meetups where they encourage people and they invite people from their vr campus their vr experience to go to the physical church that way it's just as i I love the idea man i think they call it family reunion um is the name of it but the the whole Mm. idea is like get to know the other family members that are a part of this church that are in this expression of it. So, you know, if somebody were to come up to me, you know, like we, like I would say that our VR campus is a legitimate campus. It's a legitimate church. There are people that have come in that they're like, they've told us I'm not comfortable going back into a real building yet due to health concerns, or I can, I can't due to, you know, um, health reasons or whatever and so this is their ability to find community i and i've told people like if we would if we legitimize the idea that um church online platform and facebook can be a way for people to attend church and get plugged into community like we we were doing we do online small groups and stuff like that like if we if we say that that's legitimate then we have to say that our VR campus is your church. And if this is what you want to call and this is where you want to call home, uh, your church, then welcome. We're glad that you're here. If you want us to help you find a physical church to be a part of, uh, we'll help you with that too. But, um, if your primary lane is VR, welcome home. Yeah. You know, I, that is a great kind of segue. I'm going to sort of ramble on for a second about some of the the deep thinking that I've read and that I've done myself and I'd be interested in hearing uh, your thoughts on it Um, sort of on that 
on on the on the same rails that you're, you're kind of talking about here and the the sort of foundation of chris's question this idea that we, we are moving and have moved as a i would say as a species on this planet that meeting online doing things online interacting online building relationships online uh is you know you could kind of boil it down to the reality of two separate human consciousnesses interacting in what i think is widely accepted as a real way i mean look we're, we're all millennials around here we we remember what the world was like before before the computers took over and <laughs> when social media first came around uh you know multi uh especially massively multiplayer online gaming came around and these communities uh would form and online interactions were for a long time considered just like literally not real like oh that's on the internet that's not real life or oh that's facebook that's not real life or that's a video game that's not real life you know and our, we were so i was a big gamer as a kid and uh i remember just feeling that my online friends were sometimes closer to me than my real friends and all this sort of thing is a very real experience mm -hmm. and the yeah. world has moved into a place now where it's generally accepted by the the sort of social trends and forces of our society that yeah you know online is the real world it may look different it may feel different it might uh, you might interact differently with people but it's the real world i mean stuff that happens on twitter is news you know is reported as news uh stuff that happens on online and in different forums you know is considered real life now and i think a lot of people take that for granted uh in the early days that was it was considered like an alternate universe that didn't matter and was a waste of time now it's widely accepted that whatever happens online is totally real can be important not all of it of course uh but there's you're, you're still working with the interactions between what i'm just going to say con as consciousness is you know you have two humans connecting in a way that is not physical now a lot of people will say that you know a lot of spirituality is you know physical there's there's a lot of um importance theological importance to the body and, and and the physical realm and being and doing and you know that that type of uh that type of thing it, it may be considered sort of old-fashioned or it may be considered uh you know maybe more of a a deeper uh connective you know cr creation to creation type of uh connectivity that you can't get online and i think that's where whether they think about it or not i think that's where a lot of the hesitation about uh vr church or metaverse church or just the metaverse in general which is as we've moved into this time that we recognize that you know the internet is still reality uh i think the fear is that the metaverse is sort of the next step in that it may become more important than reality or more engaging or more um, addicting or, you know, it, it, it has this potential where uh, it has it, it has endless possibilities and you can experience things that you can never experience in the real in the real world. And I think <laughs> there's a fear there that just like uh, kind of what Chris's question alluded to that there's sort of a replacement um and in that replacement we would lose something we could lose something important you think about sort of a lot of the the ancient theology the rabbinical theologies things like this like the body was very important um and i think maybe people m might consider the metaverse sort of like a, a threat to that what are your mm. thoughts so Dr. Chris was talking about, um, well, here's you know, just the alluding wondering, to, you know, are you inviting well, people into physical space, I guess? 
right 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 but he was talking about earlier that he you know uh the idea of would paul use facebook would paul use television would paul use you know all these uh platforms that are available today and what's funny you know uh basil to even think about your question is man i think paul totally would have taken advantage of all those things but i think paul would have been looking for somebody to disciple more so in those areas in order to continue the kingdom advancement right so yeah who who on who in television world could paul uh who would be who would be the timothy for paul in the television world who would be the timothy in vr who would be the timothy in facebook um in order for paul to continue pouring into these guys as they're going and pouring into others and i think that's where like (sighs) i think the threat of losing the the connection to each other the realness to each other i think if you have the mind the mindset of this is a this is a a a mountain to climb over like this is a problem um i see where that tension lies but going back to what i said earlier man the idea of being able to spread seeds of hope all around the world for the family for the for the person that hopped into our vr event if that person can get trained up to be a disciple, like if they were to continue coming to Lakeland VR campus or get plugged into Discord and become a disciple and they're so sold out for Jesus, then that becomes the opportunity to for them to be uh, hope spreaders in all the places that they go to in real life, right? right. Within their families, within their workspace, yeah, within yeah. all of that. So I think that it's more of a added to um, that's something that's taking over. Yeah. And I totally get that fear. Um, again, especially if you watch like ready player one, like that totally feeds into that fear, like the whole body suit idea that you can feel things. Like if, if you're in a boxing game, somebody punches you in the gut, you can feel it in the gut. Like that totally takes like things to a whole new level. Um, but I think we just have to have this perspective shift of, man, this isn't something that's taken away from, but it's creating the opportunities to add to what we've been called to do to go make disciples of all nations. Sounds yeah. like something I like, Mark Zuckerberg would say, Stuart. <laughs> um, I like where you went with that. And then kind of in addition to Basil's just previous thought where, you know, he was talking about the fact that there is a while the Internet feels fake you know, while it feels, you know, like something that is in, intangible, uh, it is real, you know, and there are real kinds of um, what, whatever. There's real people on the other side. There are real effects that happen because of it. The real news, you know, comes through all of these different things. And I started thinking about it in like the negative sense and then particularly from a Christian perspective that we have had this, you know, epidemic of pornography, um, you know, over the years. And pornography is something that you know, uh, I, I don't know what the percentages are, but I don't know that anybody is, you know, purchasing magazines in, you know, DVDs anymore or whatever Uh the, the form used to be. Now the form for pornography is you can pull it up on your phone, you know, at, at the drop of a hat anytime you want it. And we talk about very much how there are real implications to this thing that you're doing where you're never seeing this person you're never having any contact with this person but we as pastors as spiritual leaders um, as parents as whoever we are are saying there are very real consequences to this thing that is happening in this quote unquote virtual space you know this person that you're never actually coming into contact with there is a real spiritual experience that is happening and in the instance of pornography it's obviously very negative all of the effects are bad and adverse however i was just thinking about it as basil was talking about it that while we will recognize that there are real effects in that negative sense of pornography 
I was starting to think, what about the positive effects that might be coming from these different sorts of things? If we're saying that pornography in the spiritual can have a detrimental effect, you know, to your life, then why not the engagement in a virtual space with people, you know, who are um, believers and in sharing uh, things that are beneficial spiritually? Why might that not also have a real effect in a person's life? And then your response to that, I thought, was beautiful. And I'm just kind of, you know, bringing the two together for myself here as a lot of these things I'm thinking about, honestly, for the first time right now. But you said these things that are happening in the virtual space are having physical manifestations in their lives, that these people that you're engaging with in a virtual space are taking this back to their real life families and their jobs and those sorts of things. So um, I'm continuing to, I'm, try, I'm doing the best that I can to build to build a case for you and the work that you're doing, because I had <laughs> talked about a couple people, uh, talked to a couple people about the fact that we were having you on, and it was mostly just met with, I mean, people just kind of like being very skeptical, very critical, and, you know, again, even in my own heart, I'm kind of like, I mean, I don't know, like, is there, do we need this? Is there value to this? But really, you know, the more I think about it, I'm thinking, shoot. I mean, why not? <laughs> right. Why not? It seems like if you can reach a person through an avenue, uh, then do it. And it seems that there are, as as we've said here, uh, all of us at this point now, the things that happen in a virtual space have actual, you know, kind of uh, real world ramifications. Right. And, you know, I, I, I'll recognize this. You are a lovely man. And from what I can gather... <laughs> You've got the heart of a real servant and pastor. Uh, and you've, you know, you, you're looking at this. Apostolic evangelist. It, was that going somewhere else? You're looking. <laughs> or was that just, that was just it. I didn't know if you were, you left it like you might have had more to say. Oh, I'm so, Did I disappear? Did you guys hear me? You, uh, yeah, you said he's a real lovely man with the heart of a pastor. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, good. Sorry, okay, I, yeah. I'm, I think my brain just glitched or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Uh, so, it's, you've, in response to my question, you, you bring it down to really a very personal level with the individuals and their interactions with what you guys are, are, are doing. And I think that's undeniable. I think your, your points are undeniable. I think that there is, in the crowd of skeptics to this whole conversation, my feeling is that it is not necessarily that there cannot be individual value or successes uh, in the ministry. In fact, I, I think it's a total net positive uh, as, far as, your, the, as far as the organization, the church, um, and you know, also your, the impact that you are able to uh, exact on the kingdom of God here on earth, which is wonderful. I think the people who are skeptical or m m many of the people who are skeptical, I think they're looking at it from, from a much higher altitude, like a 30,000 foot view, uh, which, which does not necessarily include the individual that walks in, uh, to mm. your, to your service or to your metaverse. I think a lot of the worries come from, as we've seen the internet be considered more real, I think a lot of people would agree that it hasn't necessarily had like a net positive on the world. I, I, think, that, I think that people feel like, uh, you know, the internet, while it has so many wonderful things, it has, it has shifted what it is, what it means to have a human experience in this life so much that it's unrecognizable from even 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and when they think of the metaverse and they follow the trajectory that we've just seen, you know, the regular internet follow, where it completely takes over the human experience for a lot of people. Uh, whether they are, whether that's a positive thing, perhaps like in the instance of someone who uh, has a medical condition and they cannot leave their bed, the internet uh, represents freedom. However, there are kids and teens and people growing up uh, who are not bedridden, and yet the internet completely consumes their lives and has some very negative effects. And, uh, you know, following that logic out. I think there's a lot of things in society that we can point out that the internet at least has introduced more 
stress than ever mm. before and has impacts on society that have, uh, you know, that really stress people out and make them yearn for the, the olden days and make people like me, you know, to, like move out <laughs> into the desert away from away from things. Um, ironically, the Internet being the easiest way for me to interact with society now. Uh, and so I think they apply that same logic to the metaverse where it's like, yeah, you know, on an individual level, it may represent freedom to a lot of people who don't have the same abilities in the physical world. Uh, but on the other other hand, there may be perfectly fine teenagers who have the potential to make friends and participate in sports and grow up uh, with good social skills and yet there is this lure, there is this draw to an easier reality, an easier way of life, which is you just pop on the old VR headset and the universe is at your fingertips and interacting in what would traditionally be considered, you know, a normal human life or existence becomes less and less attractive. And you expand that out on a society wide scale, much like you know, with your Ready Player One uh, experience movie, which I think a, a lot of the, the VR skeptics are fans of that movie, or at least reference it continually. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I think it is a very real concern that like, hey, we've seen what internet has done to society and what it's done to people's brains and specifically, you know, young people's brains and their expectations for themselves and their body and their social interactions and their likes and their follows and their relationship with their parents and the content that they suddenly have access to which may not be beneficial in the way that we hope and it's not so much that the idea of ministry happening in the metaverse is a bad thing but it is that the the church committing to uh, being in the metaverse and lending credibility to the idea that we can get everything, including uh, a spiritual experience within the metaverse, uh, that will move society in a direction um, in a way that just people don't like. You know, we, we all understand mm -hmm. the, the possible dystopia that is all of us living in our little pods, our VR pods with our <laughs> feeding tubes hooked up to the Amazon uh, nutrient slurry subscription. And we spend our lives in our VR pods in the metaverse. And yes, some of us uh, follow Jesus and try to live out his teachings and follow his example within some bizarro uh, you know, alternate realm, almost, almost akin. You could almost say even f metaphysically or f philosophically, you know, the metaverse could be considered a type of realm, a, a, a step closer to a f spiritual type realm and us be trapped mm -hmm. in some sort of corporatocracy hellscape. <laughs> I think that's like the the broadening of it and the idea that it that the church uh would in some way play a part in that decline or that perceived decline. Not everybody needs to see it as a decline, but I think these people do. Um is hurtful to them, huh. you know. Huh. Was that enough rambling to inspire some sort of <laughs> response? <laughs> no, man, so I, 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 that was so good. So I just, I generally, I, I don't want to make this necessarily in this moment about you or Lakeland Church, Lakeland Dot Church, yep. or about your ministry or that in general. But I want to recognize that people's fears are not necessarily like, keep Jesus out of the metaverse. <laughs> That's useless. Uh, I think it's more like, you know, people who have li lived long enough to see where this could go um, are, are, are not as excited about the church um, lending it a sort of credibility mm -hmm. or playing a part in that. Yeah. Um... Man, and I totally get that. 
great ramble. Thank you. Great, great thank ramble. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, he specializes in this. My yeah. main <laughs> skill. Um, you know, it, it's interesting though. Um, as somebody who is playing in that environment, I don't know that I see it as the church is giving credibility to it, as more as others are. Uh, uh, how do I want to say it? Others are already pushing for that to be a credible thing, and the church is just finding their way of reaching those who are already there. Um, you know, and it's everything that we've already talked about. But yeah. if people are going to, if people are going to claim that the metaverse is where they live, then that forces the church to go to the new mission field and reach those mm. people. Mm. Do you, it's hard to argue with. Now, let me be clear. I do a podcast. I am a professional podcaster. I do a different podcast three times a week uh, for a total of about 12 hours, which is exhausting. But um, <laughs> But I do the whole thing in the metaverse. I wear a virtual reality headset. And so cool. um, I just want to make that clear. If you didn't know, uh, I, whatever I am accusing you, you of, or, or whatever I am communicating, someone might accuse a metaverse church of, I am also participating in. I've been sure. employed within the metaverse for many years now. Uh, so with that being said, um, Oh, I'm so sorry. What what was the point you just made? Um, they're already there. That you, they're there. Yeah, and, people are going to be living in the metaverse, yeah. and it becomes that new mission field for us to be forced to go in and, and be missionaries to it. Yes, exactly. And here's one thing that I will say. Um, perhaps it is simply a way for me to live with the choices that I've made regarding virtual reality in the metaverse, which is um, while I am in there, I am so happy to do my best to give people reasons to not be in there with me it feels like what would really be so we've we've talked about in previous ravel episodes sort of the destabilizing nature of jesus and you can you can almost almost make a metaphor about god coming to earth joining and materializing within a realm that we can, for the sake of this conversation, agree is less than the heavenly realm which Jesus participated in before he came to earth. Well said. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Are you yep. saying that Jesus actually in his time on earth was in a Just follow me VR here. type yeah. of... Follow me here. <laughs> Jesus, God, he entered a realm that was less real than the heavenly realm <laughs> that he formerly I love inhabited. It. <laughs> and in the same way, we as followers of Jesus <laughs> can enter another realm, materialize in that realm, and use it uh, to again to follow his example in the same way he did. But he also I don't think Use that opportunity in the new in in, in the new bad realm to <laughs> to teach and to preach and to inspire to set our lives and our minds and our intentions above the metaverse above the the earthiverse. I guess it's just called the Earth, universe, Earth isn't universe. it? I guess it's just called the universe. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm wonder, I could see a strategy a, a, of ministry that could be found acceptable to the, the metaverse skeptics, where if using the opportunity, finding people within the metaverse, discipling them and promoting the idea that the metaverse is not where we're meant to be, we're meant to live in uh, in another place to act from another place and that there is value in mm. exiting or setting our minds outside the metaverse instead of, you know, Hey, here we are. Let's stay here. Let's only do stuff here. 
it seems like in a place that has such a potential to trap people for their entire lives. And I don't necessarily mean literally, I just mean socially and brain chemistry wise and the addictive nature of video games in, in general. I think that there would be a lot of value to finding people there, discipling them and uh, encouraging them to not uh, set their minds on the things of the metaverse, but the things um, in the universe, if you will. There's another rant for you. What do you think about that? No, I, 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 the way that you were closing the gap on that was just beautiful to me because at the end of the day, it's exactly what we would say to somebody in real life, right? Like, this isn't it. This is not what we were meant for. Right. We were meant to be with God, doing life with God. So at some point in time, our physical bodies are going to unplug from this universe and we're going to take our last breath as believers. We're going to take our last breath uh, on this side of heaven and take our first in heaven in the presence of God. And, you know, yeah, there's this unplugging. So I, I love the way that you just painted all of that, because I think that even in that case and that ramble that you just gave, that gives me even more fuel to go back into, like we're, we're hosting a church service tonight. Uh, it gives me more fuel to hop in there and go, you guys understand, like, this isn't it. Like, there's more. And I'm not talking about outside of the headset. I'm talking about outside of this reality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was, that was really, that was really well done, Basil. Uh, I don't know that I have ever heard you make that argument before, but it's one that I have made. Uh, we're, another step kind of removed in the VR space, but it's something that I talk to people about all the time where it's like, you think that your physical existence here on this earth, like the life that you live every day, you think this is reality. But when we enter into the next life, when we enter into eternity, for those of us who it is glory, for those of us who it is heaven in paradise with God forever, uh, that reality and some, it will be, you know, uh, a reality of the wrath and, and the judgment of God. But either way, those realities that come after this life are going to feel far more real than what you're experiencing right now feels. And you can't really begin to conceive of that. You think that heaven might feel like some kind of weird dream state, but it's going to feel far more real than anything that's going on now. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a pretty uh, astute observation of God coming out of the actual reality into mm. this kind of, not that I'm, what I'm saying, this life, obviously it matters. The things that are happening in our lives are real. They have real consequences and effects, like but it is a level. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, it's, it, it was, it was, you know, very well done. I guess I think the struggle with the virtual space is, is that you have to encourage people <laughs> it's one more step removed so they're coming out of a reality that is this existence which is a shadow of the actual eternal reality and then they're in a shadow of you know what is actually real but i think that perspective that you offered there basil is is quite helpful um and uh that was really good thank man. you uh, was, now i really it was really good now i've set my trap and now i will spring it on all of you <laughs> Because as the listeners know, and as Chris, as you know, and as Stuart will soon to find out, um, I have uh, been in the church my entire life, was born into it to uh, pastor parents um, in church leadership from a very early age. I've worked in small churches. I've worked in gigantic churches um, and ones that are unimaginably even bigger than that. And so I like to think that I have the experience experience within the organization of the little C church um, to have developed a healthy, well, and I'll say this has developed alongside of my sort of um, lifelong journey into something someone might call anti-authority uh, anti tendencies. Um, and you know, the, the idea of an organization, a church could be yours, could be anybody, Stuart, this isn't about you. This is about me having another <laughs> chance to ramble. Okay. <laughs> that an, an organization entering the metaverse, using it, um, with absolutely 100% good intentions, intentions to spread the kingdom of God and miss an opportunity, uh, to, to get people 
out of it, to get people um, out of the crosshairs of any one organization and encourage them to leave the village and find what God has for them in the real world. And I believe Mm -hmm. now that I'm saying the words out loud and you are hearing them that you would absolutely agree with me. Um, But the way that churches in America have tended to operate from the very highest levels is is a bit of a numbers game. It it can parallel Mm. a a sort of corporate structure, an American corporate structure, which I think we can all agree, you know, the the sort of lizard overlords that control our day-to-day lives in ways that we uh, are unable to even comprehend sometimes. Um, uh, You know, what I what I love to see is churches operating from a, a, a a, a destabilizing um, framework where we are not here to make you comfortable in the place you are, even if that is in our very pews, you know, um, but to destabilize what you think this life is about and to find other ways of living it and expressing it. And so mm-hmm. I would love to come visit anybody's Metaverse Church and basically be discipled and be invited back whenever I'm wandering the metaverse, but to be, um, to be given, to be made uncomfortable enough to go out, uh, to go out, to go out of it. I don't, I, I, I am having a hard time articulating this in a way that does not end with get out of the metaverse, which is not what I'm exactly trying to say. Um, but you know, making, making a congregation too comfortable in attending, uh, one, one event, uh, whether Mm -hmm. recurring or not, um, I Mm -hmm. find has led to similar problematic social, uh, consequences, um, to just the corporate idea that you sign up for a subscription to is something and you forget about it forever and that's how you and that's how you live your life um you know sort of trapped in a subscription model uh to something and there's another ramble this one even more sort of esoteric and random um than before and i'm gonna be quiet now and let you guys talk about stuff (laughs) uh yeah. Tell people to get uh, out of the I'm metaverse, being... man. Get out. Save yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Does this go against? Um, your, uh, I I your definitely uh. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> also, Chris. You know, what... Chris, do we have an employee handbook? Uh, for one. here. Yeah. I need to be we... held to account on this show. <laughs> yeah, some guidelines. Some guidelines wouldn't hurt. Um, I'm sorry. I do Stuart. wonder though. I mean, are you, Stuart, are you, I mean, do you recruit people to the uh, VR church? I mean, we, that's something that we definitely do in brick and mortar churches. <laughs> uh, funny that we have to say that um, anymore, but uh, that we do, I mean, you, you know, you're inviting people to come in. You want people to come in to be a part. Are you, are you inviting people into the virtual space or do you just try to save a step and send them straight into the church? Of course you have, you know, the opportunity, as you said, for a global uh, community there but how does mm-hmm. that even how does that even work do you do you put out uh ads and stuff mm-hmm. i mean are you how does it yeah. work yeah so in alt space where we are um alt space gives the event user the event host the opportunity if the guidelines are met to uh advertise on the main event board so anybody who puts on the headset enters into alt space which by the way um Dr. Chris, you don't need a headset to get in. So if you want to come visit, you can do it from a 2D experience. So you're more than oh, yeah? you're more than welcome to uh, here's here's your invite into the virtual okay. church, not the brick right. and mortar, as you so called. Um, <laughs> but so we get this free advertisement in that sense um, through Alt Space. So anytime that we've got an event going on, we're advertised on there. But the other thing that I do, um, and I've encouraged my team. So when we 
created the world and launched it as a uh, campus uh, back on Easter, one of the things that I've asked my team to do is anytime somebody enters into our event, friend them immediately um, and let them decide whether or not they want to be friends with you in alt space. And then every time that we log on and we're hosting an event, if any of our friends, because alt space tells us if our friends are on, we just shoot them a message that simply says, come visit with the link to our service. And then all they have to do is press on that link and it would drop them right into our event. So there is an aspect of being able to invite people to uh, your virtual church. And I can take that same uh, uh, invite link and post it up on Facebook or any other social media platform. And as long as you've got at least the 2D experience of AltSpace, you could enter into our virtual reality service. Um, so there, there is an aspect of that that's still at play. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. There was um, something else in there too, but. I yeah, I'm not entirely. Sorry. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. I was just asking about kind of recruiting because I know, you know, outside of a virtual experience, you're just asking people to come come visit the church. Um, so. What but, about the and, ordinances? And, what are, are you guys doing baptisms and, and sacraments and things like that? Yeah. So we're still waiting to do our first baptism service, um, but we have done two, um, or sorry, we're about to host our second uh, communion service this wow. weekend, this weekend, um, which is, has been a fun conversation. I, I've had somebody come into our environment that the first thing they did was, so you're the pastor of this, still call church. I'm like, yep. And, uh, immediately goes into, I can't believe that you guys would consider this church and immediately went into, uh, communion and baptism and all of that. And I, I let them do their rant. Not as great as Basil, you're, but I let them do but it. But you're very gracious um, <laughs> when somebody wants to rant, rant. And I, I love that about you, Stuart. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. Appreciate it. Um, but I, you know, at the end of the day, like I, I love having that conversation with people because I've had to change my mentality on it as well. You know, every single time that I've had a conversation with somebody about getting baptized, I've always told them, you know, even when I am baptizing somebody, I tell them this is an individual who is making, who has made the inward decision and now they're just publicly professing it outwardly. There's no difference within the virtual reality world. If somebody wants to get baptized in virtual reality, them doing so there is still just the outward expression of the inward decision. And to do so with other people witnessing that outward expression, and I've also told people this one, I've told uh, churches, uh, members of the church, that this celebration isn't necessarily about the person who's getting baptized, but it's about your responsibility as the members of the church to hold this person accountable to the decision that they've made, that inward decision. So yes, we're celebrating their baptism, but they're also expecting all of you as members of the body to hold them accountable and help them walk with integrity to this decision that they've made. So we can bring those elements into virtual reality because they're still the inward decisions that somebody's made that's just being professed publicly it's interesting how the technology has created a situation the virtual reality has created an opportunity for thinkers theological thinkers to kind of need to define sort of a virtual theology and i don't mean that mm. in a in a bad way or necessarily um but to expand out the the concept of the heart behind baptism to remove it from the physical action which this would never even had to be thought of before you know it's this new time where you actually have to think about these things because it's not like you know if there was a phone church where you call in every sunday and you stay at your home and you mm. listen and you chat and participate in fellowship on the phone and you have a phone baptism service i mean what would the you know the the analog would be okay i am now going under the water <laughs> splash, 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 splash. and now i'm coming back up <laughs> and sort of that you, you know you can it sounds silly and we're having fun here 
Um, but yeah. you know, you talk about that virtual theology where you you're basing the 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 action, the commitment on the the stance of the heart, which I cannot argue with. I mean, that's that is absolutely a viable. Um, I don't mean this word in its sort of. Um, uh, what is the word? I don't. I, I don't mean this in its sort of colloquial uh, sense that it's used a lot today about the church today. But you're sort of deconstructing, taking apart, and looking at the constituent parts of baptism, and finding the very core of it that stands um, huh. with within the you know whatever theology of baptism we can we can sort of define. Um, but yes, as a as an outward act to express an inward change, um, we're in an interesting time where you sort of have to think about that in order to apply baptism to virtual reality. I, was that a long conversation that you had? Was this was this uh, as sort of tedious figuring out as it was for me to describe? Uh, you know, what's funny is. It- it never has been every single time and no matter how long the rant was from the other person every single time as soon as it is as soon as i mention man we're still just celebrating the outward decision or the outward uh, expression of the inward decision it's kind of like always the drop the mic moment of like oh, oh yeah like this is about somebody's personal choice it's not about the necessary act that's being performed like yeah, we're celebrating the person and them entering into the family, entering into the body. And yeah, every time, as soon as that statement's made, it's just like, wow, maybe I've turned this into a bigger thing than what it's actually supposed to be. Um, well, it's, which I, it's it, nice to me, it's, it's fun- sort of like a, a maxim. You know, you've, you've boiled it down to, a, uh, sorry, an axiom. It's sort of axiomatic, uh, which is to say that there is nothing to really argue about <laughs> when when you say that um yeah. because there is no you know unless someone has uh, a very strong theology of the body and if you're not literally going under the water then you are literally not being baptized uh for whatever that means to their theology i mean you can if we talk about it in the context of um of communion you know you can think of sort of the catholic doctrine of Mm -hmm. uh, transubstantiation where the actual physical act of the cracker physically entering your mouth physically turning into the body of christ as it goes down would be it'd be much a much bigger jump a much more difficult jump to make that into a virtual reality uh experience yeah but at the same time like you know we've been broadcasting services since uh well i think lakeland's been doing it even before the pandemic got started but when i was sitting in the seat as a digital pastor we would do um live hosting so we would have a team that was there to greet our online audience into the service and whenever we had uh communion going on we told them hey we got communion going on today so make sure that you grab your element that represents the cracker and your element that represents uh the the wine and let's do this thing whether that's a waffle or an orange juice or whatever it is like we want you to celebrate communion with us so for you know our catholic friends it would be the same thing with nvr like okay if you want like the physical elements then go get the physical elements, but we're still going to do this together. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's always the other option. You can uh, pay your subscription to the Amazon church to have <laughs> right. the cracker and the grape juice slurry pumped into your feeding tube at the right time. And um, <laughs> what are you going to say? What was the process for? Or I know you said you haven't done it yet, but you're planning on having a baptism service. So what is that going to look like? I know that you can encourage people at home to grab whatever elements they might use to represent the, the blood and the body. But uh, And I'm totally fine with that. I think that that's just fine. Um, but what do, you, what do you what are you planning on doing for a baptism service? Yeah, so our world builder, he's got two elements for us. So we've got a baptismal that is built into um, the floor space of our campus. And then the other element is over by our waterfall in our outdoor environment. Um, And what it looks like um, through the practice of immersion is you go down into the water and come back up. Okay. Okay. So it's just a virtual submersion. 
Yep. Um, okay. Well, that's good for all of our Baptist friends out there that you guys aren't sprinkling. That's your actual <laughs> submersion. They'll have one less thing to one less thing to argue about. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm if gonna... they want, we just throw them under the waterfall too. Ooh, that's a fun. Yeah. One. Yeah. That's. that's cool. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. I don't. It's. It's hard because. I like I I truly and don't take this the wrong way, but I truly don't want to be okay with this idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I really don't. But as I'm thinking about it, and even as we started talking about the ordinances, I was like, they are merely symbols. Like there right. is no power in them. You know, we don't we don't believe. You know, at least in the Protestant Church, oh, we don't believe brother. that these are means of grace they're not means of grace that you don't receive anything yeah, they're not a, in a they're not a magical acts. technology uh, right uh, right at least they are yeah in sort of a, a more modern um theology working theology of most churches yeah they're 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 simply expressions of these things and it is i mean it is again as i'll say like one step further removed from whatever the expression is itself, but even that expression itself, I mean, baptism is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection. We're not actually right. dying and being right. raised back to physical life like right. Jesus was. We're, you know, it's a picture of it. It's a picture of yeah. we're going down into the dead and then we're coming back up out. So it's like if you do it with actual physical water or you do it in a virtual space, I'm really having, I, I am trying to not be okay with it, but really, I mean, I'm hearing yeah. it and I'm like, man, I don't know. Like there, there it, you might be, you might be onto something here. So um, it, it is it is just crazy the hills that we have decided as the capital C church to die on that when mm-hmm. we've been forced to really look at it, we, we sit there and go, why did we turn that into big pebble uh, or big mountain moments? Like we, we made it like, it's such a great celebration of the ordinances of the, of the symbology of all of it. But at the end of it, it's like, man, why did we make this a hill to die on? And then I, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's been rolling around social media probably since closer to Easter or before Easter. But somebody created this form that talks about, here's all the ordinances, here's baptism, here's communion. And right after that is, now let's look at the criminal on the cross who didn't get baptized, who didn't yeah, take sure, communion, sure. Right. right? And it's right. just like, yeah. man, let that one play with your theology for a little bit and see. And it's just crazy the hills that we've decided to die on. And we look at it at the end of it and go, that wasn't really worth dying on. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's that's exactly what I meant about a means of grace. You know, they don't, you right. don't need to be baptized to be saved. You don't need to take communion to be saved. Um, we certainly encourage it, um, but All as right. you even said, I mean, baptism, it is a outward expression, you know, of the inward change. It's the outward expression of your the, the decision you've made There's in your heart. And I suppose certainly some Bible trivia that, that could uh, give you something to think about, though, <laughs> yeah. Chris. You got to let me know. If I'm coming, I want to come. I mean, I'll come I'll come in and check out one of your services, but I want to I want to go to Bible trivia night, man. See, test my <laughs> test my knowledge yeah. against some of the others. My secret weapon. Bible yeah, that'll be, <laughs> okay, that'll be fun. Okay, so here's a question. Let's 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 bring it. Let's make it a little bit more realistic here for a second. Um, trolls, you got trolls coming in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's you know what's you funny. Talk about there's the conversation about anonymity and Twitter and all this nonsense. It's really hard to be anonymous when you are a physical person within a church. You're much less likely to be disruptive. What's the deal? You got bouncers. Ah, uh, so uh, my my team is set up as hosts that they can, if they need to, they can boot somebody from the environment if we feel like that they're just really there to troll and be disruptive. Um, you know, and there's some cases, okay, see, so here's a good one. Um, I had Jesus of Nazareth hop into one of our church services. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice of him. Oh man, it was it was great. Um, I had to kick Jesus of Nazareth out of my virtual church, just like in his time on the physical plane, getting kicked <sighs> out of the temple for. Yeah. What was he doing? Yeah. What was he doing this time? It, yeah, he was. He claiming uh, to be <laughs> the king of the Jews. Not healing anyone. Was he healing yeah, yeah. on the Sabbath? No. By the power uh, of demons. <laughs> 
yeah, so he came in and this guy, um, I've actually caught him in some other environments too. And I'm just like, man, I wonder if he recognizes me as the guy that kicked him out of the church. Um, but there, he just came in and he just started disrupting. He's like, Hey, let me tell you about, um, my real existence. And, you know, somebody, he, he has like a team of people, um, man, I'm going to use this terminology and I don't know that it really applies here or I want it to apply, but he's got these disciples that follow him. Uh uh into yeah. other uh church like events and whatnot to be disruptive and what they're they're there and they start asking questions um you know, one of them is like you know oh man how how did it play out it was a good one it was something along the lines of talking about jesus's parents and this guy goes off and starts talking about how his mom went around sleeping around with somebody else within nazareth and got pregnant and said that you know uh-huh this child belongs to God or is the son of God and X, Y, Z. And I'm just like, all right, this is where I'm now going to have to make the decision whether or not to boot you. And ultimately I, I made that decision. I was like, okay, you're being a little disruptive of this. Um, uh, more importantly, anybody who has questions, you're making it harder for them and giving them more, more confusion than anything else. Right. Yeah. So, um, you should have crucified. So, him. <laughs> oh, Maybe he, he, if this is how he oh, wants to gosh. play oh we'll play buddy <laughs> oh man oh lord uh help us yeah so you know in, in that instance that was somebody that uh we had to boot out but there's also been other times like uh there was one time back when we first launched into this that we had antichrist for president 2024 who came into our environment and swamp witch right. and they were there to troll yeah, on the campaign uh, that's trail. their neighbor tags Right, exactly. Trying to get that evangelical and that turned vote. In, right. Uh, that turned out to be one of the most fruitful conversations um, probably ever uh, that I got to witness because these were people that they are straight up against the church, straight up against the Bible, straight up against Jesus, um, you know, everything. And so they started a conversation. This was before we were doing live streams and all that. So they they started asking questions. And at one point in time, and the next gen director was engaging in conversation. Some of the other believers that were in the environment were engaging in this conversation. At one point in time, I took a step back and I was taking a look around the room and I was watching all these people who were engaged in this conversation, not not, uh, conversing, but just taking it all in. And I got out of the headset that night and I reached out to our next gen director and I said, man, all those people either just got their first dose of what it, what Christianity is about, or if they're believers, they just got a firsthand experience of what it's like to have a conversation without it getting confrontational or heated and being able to share their faith with somebody that doesn't believe what they believe in. Um, I was like, hmm. they probably don't get that in real life. Right. Like you don't just come across somebody on the street who, you know, some in some places you do. In a situation but you don't normally where just... you can have a conversation with somebody like that. Right. Most right. people spend and... a lot of time and energy avoiding people like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And this just played out in real time. I was like, oh, man, this has such kingdom win written all over it four people that they they got to experience for the first time this is how i can have a conversation with somebody with a family member that doesn't believe what i believe in this is great so you know there's so there's times that the trolls come in we're like okay this is distracting and this is not uh you know fruitful so okay let's give you the boot and then there's moments like you know with antichrist 2024 and swamp which we're like this is kingdom advancing in the long run we'll let this one play out Huh. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's uh, like life. It's about recognizing the opportunities and recognizing when it's not an opportunity. Those are mm-hmm. very difficult things to identify sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Hard soil, hard soil versus fertile soil. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and Antichrist and uh, Swamp Witch may have been birds trying to pick away at the seeds, but definitely within that group of people, there was some fertile soil that was uh, getting some planting happening on. Yeah, and as, and as far as just life experience goes, I mean, that's a, that's a valuable life experience to witness 
and to learn and to you know possibly need to deploy one day or take the opportunity uh, to have those conversations. And if you have not seen it successfully done before, it may uh, activate a, you know, in the activation of fight or flight, probably going to mm-hmm. go for flight in that scenario if you have not uh, had right. that life experience. So I could see some, some serious value in that. Huh. Where do you see this going? And I mean on a broad on the broad scale something tells me that maybe you don't care that you are focused (laughs) on doing god's work where you are in the time that you are in uh but i don't want to assume where do you see this going do you see this as a long-term thing do you see this as a trend uh you know are the the metaverse skeptics overreacting to something that might disappear soon or what do you think I think just like in, in with every technology, everything um, has its season. Um, I'm hearing rumors, and you guys, I, I tend to always be a little late on the technology game. As much as I love to believe that I'm tech savvy, um, I always tend to be late on everything. But, you know, the, the rumors that I'm hearing right now is augmented reality. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. that's kind of what has my ears perked up right now. And I think that there's, there is a chance that ar totally kills vr yeah um and we'll see we'll see so right now the long game is uh my senior leadership and i were just talking today about okay so we've been in alt space um we know that there are other platforms so how do we how do we get into there and do that successfully so we're looking at that as you know future um air quotes can't do them in a podcast but you know quote unquote uh campus launches so we're looking into that um all the while that i'm keeping my ears open uh to what is happening with ar um you know i'm a huge apple fan and i hear that's kind of where that's gonna get its play at so um i'll be the first in line to get my ar glasses from apple when that comes and then i can start having conversations with people about the mark of the beast and whatnot all over again so that's fine (laughs) (laughs) Um, but there's also, um, there's, there's a, a girl that on Thursday nights, uh, this has been fascinating. I, I hopped into her environment for the first time, uh, in alt space last week. She, um, she live casts, uh, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. She, uh, a hologram of herself in alt space and she's able to interact with people um who are in her environment and she's uh she's a musician so she i think she lives out in nashville or something like that uh doing country music and all that kind of right uh (laughs) doing country music and stuff but she holographically shows up into an alt space event on a stage and even though she's not in via headset she can still interact with the people who are in via headset and taking song requests and all that kind of stuff. So I think long, long game wise, I think Lakeland's just barely scratching the surface of what we can accomplish in VR, which makes it really, really exciting. Cause that means that there's a lot more that we can do. I'm just hoping that we don't continue. I don't, I'm hoping that we don't play from behind, you know, while somebody else is doing holographic images in VR, we're still putting up a screen and live casting a sermon. And I think it'd be fantastic if all of a sudden my senior pastor is holographed onto the, our stage and interacting with our VR audience the same way that he would our in real life audience. Um, so it's, it's got its life right now and it doesn't seem like it's on life support yet or even heading that direction. Um, so we're playing, we're playing to see what can we get out of this and, you know, when AR becomes a thing, we'll play in that. Yeah. Well, I do love that you are truly out on the frontier of how the church can stay. <laughs> I was going to say relevant, but that just made me cringe. Really, really. I just got, <laughs> I shivered a bit there. No, stay, stay there. Stay visible. Stay in the place where the people who need the church are. And uh, it's, uh, you know, kudos to your, you know, your, your lead teams over there for, um, 
you know, thinking ahead, doing it again with uh, intentions, kingdom intentions. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, as as riled up as I can get about it, uh, I'm excited to see what you uh, and your church and other churches um, do. I think it's um, I think it's enterprising. It's sort of for the kingdom, you know, enterprising for Jesus. Uh -huh. I love it. And, uh, yeah, I would, you got to send me an email when you got your holographic pastor up there on the stage. And one of these days, <laughs> I tend to, because I work with the VR headset on, I tend to not do a whole lot of, spend a whole lot of free time in there. Um, but I would be very interested in seeing on what you guys got going on on your virtual reality campus there so thank you and thank you for being mm. so gracious uh as i tried to represent my own concerns but also the concerns of many people that uh, have i've interacted with um and for letting me ramble <laughs> yeah yeah definitely yeah. um yeah i just want to say uh thank you as well and um you know, I have to say, kind of as Basil just said, but just to echo the thought that, um, I mean, if nothing else, uh, your church and, and the ministry that you're involved in is looking at where culture is moving and at where uh, things are trending. And just as we have, you know, taken advantage of radio and television and Internet and all of those different things, it is one more avenue uh, to reach people with the gospel. So again, as I've said, coming in kind of feeling critical about it and honestly not even really entirely sure how I felt, but man, I hear your heart, uh, to reach people with the gospel and to get people plugged in, you know, uh, however it is, or perhaps unplugged, um, <laughs> as it may be, <laughs> but, um, Man, I just uh, continue to do the good work out there, continue to reach people with the gospel, and I think it's something that all of us, you know, can think of. Whatever avenues that we have, you know, to reach people, we should be using those for the glory of God. We should be using those for the advancement of the kingdom. So, um, it, encouraging, man, and inspiring, and um, keep up the good work out there. There are people who are in that space who need the good news just as there are people anywhere else so um appreciate what you're doing and thank you for your time today yeah again thank you guys for the opportunity um it's fun being able to have this conversation and maybe even just shed some light on what god's wanting to do uh through the metaverse that maybe nobody's really thinking about yet um but man i, I love this opportunity so thank you guys so much yeah amen brother yeah. are there um are there links or, or if anybody's interested, how can they learn more? How can they attend a service? You got a Instagram channel. Where, where yeah. should people plug go? your stuff? Where should people go after this? Yep. So uh, if they want to know anything about what Lakeland is doing with virtual reality, they can go to lakeland.church and um, right there on our homepage, uh, gives them a link right into um, all the different ways to participate in VR, which headset you should consider, how you can get into alt space on the 2D experience. Um, the best thing that I can say is hop onto our Discord. So that's simply lakelanddiscord.com. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys want any of like the my personal stuff, but yes. that's the best way to do it for VR yeah. Throw stuff. it out there. It's whatever you yeah, want so if... people to know is the real <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So if anybody wants to know more, like just to have a conversation about virtual reality, um, you can definitely reach out to me at Stuart at Lakeland dot church. Um, and then if you just want to know more about what. Uh, what's going on with me um, I've got stuartmcpherson.org and from there it will shoot you to all my social media channels um, and all that kind of good stuff as well so okay love it Very well go cool. check it out Very folks cool. I know you guys are interested to see what it's all about and perhaps even experience it for yourself um, but whatever the case may be, Stuart, thank you very much one more time. And, uh, Hey, whenever yes. we, uh, we're going to need to check in someday. So when you get the hologram Absolutely. pastor going, send me an email. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, man. Cyber fiends.
Dragons. We're blasting through the interspace and uh, hacking into the mainframe for Jesus. Wow. Yeah. I've been working on some language, maybe, if I start my own metaverse church. Yeah, you are uh, quite diverse in your, you know, language and your, not just mm -hmm. your ability to, you know, give the introductions with the help of a thesaurus, I'm assuming, but... Mm -hmm. Also just, I mean, you have a robust vocabulary. I will tell you that for sure. Thank you. That's what comes from being what's called a generalist, Dr. Chris. Okay. See, a generalist mm -hmm. are people who generally don't get higher degrees in anything. Oh, okay. And so we have the opportunity. <laughs> to learn a little of everything. To learn a little bit about a lot of things that mostly are entirely useless. And that's what makes us a good team, Chris. <laughs> Jack of all trades, they call it. Expert <laughs> of none. Is that how it goes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but better a Jack than an expert of one. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I've never heard that before. Gotcha. I mean, I... Yeah, that's the full phrase. <laughs> okay. That's don't even get me started, bro. <laughs> um anyways, so wonderful conversation yes. as many will now either be frustrated with or inspired by. I have some mm, I've spent a lot of time thinking about the metaverse in general and the church's participation in the metaverse. And here's the thing, uh, my thinking about the church participating in the metaverse would be entirely useless if it were not for people like Stuart McPherson, the yeah. virtual reality campus pa pastor at Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, Lakeland Church. So I appreciate um, the existence of this uh, ministry and Stuart for giving me a reason to hold such strong views. Yeah. Um, but as we sort of alluded to in the intro, um, what a wonderful man and what a wonderful ministry. Yes. And I love the simplicity of it where I have the, where admittedly I have the space and the mm, it, probably too much free time to think about these things uh, from <laughs> in the depth that I do. Uh, the position that Stuart has um, to simply have a straightforward, I would say pure desire to bring the gospel into the metaverse uh, is impossible to argue with, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fascinating discussion because... Uh, as we, you know, continue to get, uh, I guess some would say further and further removed and detached from actual reality, you know, and going into these virtual types of realities. And as we talked about in the conversation, they are actually still versions of reality. I mean, you can't, you can't separate the people having the experiences from, you know, the reality of existing. So they're actually still there in yeah. reality, but they are engaging in it in a different way. And, you know, it's just been, there's there's a lot of criticism about uh, what's happening in the virtual space and those sorts of things and just becoming disjointed from who we are and all of that. But the fact of the matter is, is it's like he is, there are people in this space and he considers himself to be, and you can think whatever you want to about it, but he really won me over that he considers himself to be a missionary going into this space. It is a, you know, it is a whole yeah. different realm. You could think of it as a different country. There's different, whatever boundaries, you know, that he's moving into that some other people just aren't in. And if there are going to be people in that space, then why not come into that space with the gospel? And you can still make all the yep. talks you want about, all the arguments about it shouldn't replace, you know, people coming to church physically and all of that. But I was thinking about it after the fact, you know, and during COVID, all of that, a lot of churches started doing live streaming um, video, you know, for their, for their parishioners who couldn't come into church. And a lot of them didn't have those capabilities beforehand, and they just never needed them and didn't really think about it. And almost, you know, every church that had the finances and the resources to do it went into live stream. Well, now all the people are coming back to the church, and they're thinking, well, we got live stream, may as well, you know, just leave it up there for all the anyone else who might stumble across it. And I'm just thinking to myself, if a church is live streaming their services onto Facebook or any other avenue, what's the difference in doing it 
in VR, you know? So I really did kind of have like a little bit of a struggle coming into this, but by the time it was over, I got to tell you, I really was like, dude, this is great. I pray for this guy, you know, uh, support him and what he's doing. And just really, I, I'm just really on board with, sure. There's a virtual space, <laughs> start a church there. Let's start a church everywhere. Right. If Elon Musk goes to Mars, we should start a church there too. Do you know what I mean? Like let's have church everywhere. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know, I was particularly challenged when the conversation sort of dipped into the nature of the ordinances as mm, i learned yes on the podcast, yes yes of things like uh you know the the taking communion and being baptized and things and there's very strong very strong i found myself um feeling very strong feelings about the act of physical communion and physical um baptism and uh being brought back to the well the concept but also the truth that like they are representations already even yes. in their physical form yeah you know now i know that there will be very smart talented well learned and faithful um individuals who would have very good argumentation against uh, doing virtual versions of them. Um, but more than anything, I'm happen I'm happy to have been challenged to literally think about that for the first time. I don't think I had ever even considered the, that aspect of the, the ordinances yeah. of, uh, of communion and baptism. Yeah. I'm still not convinced, still think everybody should stay out <laughs> stay out of the metaverse i think it is a threat to the human experience on this earth uh jeff bezos definitely still wants to lock us all in metaverse pods with feeding tubes and <laughs> subscriptions to you know different types of nutrient slurry uh fully fully endorse um some sort of luddite uh perspective on moving into that realm uh, still, I'm not fully on board with like the church endorsing uh, the the progress towards that sort of um, corporatized uh, virtual life. Admittedly, we are still a ways out, but I could easily see that happening within my lifetime. And um, you'll you'll find me, you know, off in a cave, probably starving to death somewhere. Um, podcasting, because of course Starlink will still let me podcast from my cave. Uh, but yeah, you know, and such is the life that I've chosen. Uh, but I think there's a lot of good perspective, honestly. Yeah. I've been, I've ha I've held these views for a long time and have literally never talked to anybody <laughs> who is doing um, a more traditional church ministry in the metaverse in this way and of course it's hilarious because i do a majority of my podcasting with a virtual headset on uh virtual reality headset and podcasting from the metaverse now admittedly this is more of an art project and uh and sort of uh i don't know some sort of mm, ambiguous statement towards our declining future of human experience with the prom a false promise of utopia. Um, but that doesn't always come across in my work, I understand. Um, but that's just like uh, another wonderful um, historic rant from me about a complicated topic that I cannot stop obsessing over. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, well. Um, mm -hmm. I will just echo the sentiment that you had that I think that there are, uh, dangers in people becoming too immersed in, you know, any, uh, addicted. sort of medium addicted to, you know, virtual reality. I have used virtual reality before, played some video games in it, just some, had different kind of experiences. It is very addictive. 
um, you know, when you first start, there's this all these weird sensations. But it's like that with anything: television, whatever, movies, music, all kinds of different things. We can we can find ourselves immersed in and addicted to. And, um, you know, certainly VR in itself, and we've talked about this before, that most creations of men in and of themselves are neutral in, you know, their whatever moral qualities. And it is, you know, the Mm -hmm. nature in which we decide to use them or the way in which we give ourselves over to them. So, yes, there are certainly dangers uh, to you know uh, what's going on in virtual reality. It is there are definitely people, the powers that be, and nefarious forces out there who will try to use that to manipulate and you know draw people into trances and all of those different types of things. However, uh, if the space is being used um, for something, you know, uh, why not use it for the gospel? So I, again, hear me, everyone, I'm not a proponent of, I don't think any, everybody should go just forsake their church and go join a VR church. But if there's going to be people in the VR world, why not, uh, try to reach them with the gospel? So, um, there you have it. If my, if someone is, if someone is trapped, sort of Tron like, if you've been absorbed into the cyberverse and there is no escape for you you (laughs) might as well go to a metaverse church (laughs) and maybe somebody there can help you escape uh the 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 sort of cyberverse that you've been encapsulated that your soul has been encapsulated in uh and help you escape through some sort of uh, ultra uh, 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 ultra cyber modem to reunite you with your physical form. And I think maybe that might be uh, a good idea for a, you know, metaverse church. You take everything Reun- to like the furthest, like the furthest Re- <laughs> edge reunite of absurdity. People, <laughs> reunite them with their physical existence uh on the you know the the in the universal realm on on earth that uh god created all right well there you go folks i hope that this gave you something to think about yeah. and if not uh read a book okay mm-hmm. this is coming and there's nothing you can do about it um <clears throat> Not wrong there. Um, just to and just to echo again uh, your sentiment from earlier about Stuart. Uh, if nothing else, I mean the man has has a pure and a sincere heart um, in what he's Love doing, it. and um, wonderful. Really, just got to commend Lord, for, for sure. sure. For sure, you can you can mm-hmm. disagree with his with his approach there, but you can't disagree with um, you know the motive of his heart, uh, at least as he's expressed it to us. I mean, he could be Amen. you know the Antichrist, and we don't know it, so we'll, uh, we'll have to and wait. Log see. in. Log in. Check it out. Uh, Lakeland Church uh, VR. You, we, we gave the links. Go get the links. The links will be in the, uh, in the description. Go log on, see what they're doing over there. Yeah. You, you be the judge. Yeah. Um, Chris, I... I'm reading currently an article, mm. and I say currently because it's an extremely long article yeah, they exist. on the thetimes.co.uk about an app called Glorify. Have you heard about this? No, no. Please yeah. tell me. So it's um, big app. It's coming up, coming up application. You ever heard of them on your iPhone? Uh, and uh, it's yes, it's like a Headspace or Calm uh, sort of self help app um, revolving around the Bible and general Christianity and I think might be another good target I don't know these these guys they're they're I don't know if we could get them but we should send an email we should see well you know this this uh, interaction between technology and spirituality I think is a a rich vein Uh, if for nothing else uh, definitely allows me to Mm, waste everybody's time by rambling on uh, and on and on about how microchips are going to enslave us <laughs> all. Yeah, uh, I just looked it up. It looks pretty cool. Um, nothing. I haven't tried it yet. Nothing alarming. Try it out. Um, right now, I just got one for uh, 
uh, my wife for Christmas. She uh, has a you, lot of. You got Bible. your wife an app. I did. You got your wife an app I did. for Christmas. Yeah, it was like I mean, mm. it was like a hundred dollars for the for the membership, but it's a Bible app. Oh, that's it. And I can't remember. I th- it was either called Abide or Dwell or something like that. I think mm. it was Abide. Something trendy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, they have mm. all kinds of different. She likes to listen to the Bible, you know, on her app, but she didn't like any of the voices. And on this one, you can like pick background mm. music. And they have like 20 different voices you can choose from. And they have reading plans and all that stuff. So um, I jumped in on that experience. one. Yeah, it looks like Customized. that's what this Glorify thing is. But yeah, let's, like that. Yeah. let's look at them. Let's check all them right. out. All right, we'll check it out. We'll send out some emails, folks. If anybody has any contacts over at Glorify, um, connect us. Because actually, it was a listener of the show that connected us to Stuart. So mm-hmm. look at you. Yeah. Uh, listeners, making waves. If you know anybody, if you got connections, uh, let us know. I believe, oof, I need to pull out. I think it was, a, I believe it was a listener named Tyler. Thank you very much, Tyler, for connecting us to Stuart. I'm really praying that it, your name was Tyler because I do <laughs> not have it pulled up, but I'm almost 100% positive that your name is Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. I just for connecting us uh, pulled up our email just while you were talking, and we'll just let everybody know if you're still listening to this for some reason that mm-hmm. uh, we're working through it. I haven't got in there. I've been busy with the baby in the church and finishing up some classes I was teaching and all kinds of other stuff, but there's a lot of emails in here. I'm getting to them. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. Unless Basil beats me to and it. And I will. I will confirmed. I will confirmed. How's that for a... Uh... It's bad. They don't They don't match. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was Tyler. I'm in my Twitter. Thank you, Tyler, for connecting us with Stuart. Very helpful. And you, you, dear listener, can be just like Tyler by connecting us to um, techno-Christians um, like Stuart so we can explore this more. All right, everybody. It's time for us to end this episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ravel. Send us emails rate and review us on apple Podcasts. it's very exciting for us to see but also very helpful Mm -hmm. as far as the algorithms go and make sure to tune in next week but until then godspeed thanks for listening to ravel to learn more about who we are what we believe or how to support this ministry visit our website at ravelpodcast.com If you have a question you would like answered on the show or to let us know how we're doing, email us at contact at ravelpodcast.com. This project is made possible by the prayers and generosity of listeners just like you.